Hi, welcome back to Mel's Health. I'm Mel and it's always lovely to have you here. Today I'm going to speak about something I haven't put in any of my videos before, but it's in a lot of news. Uh, there's Facebook groups dedicated to it and there's more and more medical articles coming out about it. And that is the relationship between COVID-19, blood clots and pneumonia. This video follows on directly from my previous video about what potentially caused my clots. Um, it was on protein S deficiency and the oral contraceptive pill. So if you haven't seen that one, check it out after this one. So I did originally plan to do a video around the COVID-19 relationship um, just to talk about the stories that I've seen that people have and the research into the topic because it's very prevalent. But then Thursday last week, um, just after I released that last video, I went to my nine month review uh, with the thrombosis clinic to see my specialist there. And I was still obviously reporting the same pains, no real improvement. And my specialist said that she just doesn't know why I'm not improving and I'm still experiencing the same pains. She said a bit of a loss as to what to do. And she said she was thinking about my case the night before our appointment and just came to the conclusion that I may possibly have had COVID at some point without knowing and now I'm a COVID long hauler. She said the only people that she has seen who have any kind of similarity to the things that I'm reporting and any kind of similar cases have been in those that are suffering long-term effects from having a positive COVID infection. Whilst we were sat in the appointment, we asked the question of if COVID didn't exist, how many patients have you seen that report similar things to me or have the same experience and prolonged pain? And she said she's never seen it, not for this long. It's, it makes no sense to her and she's at a bit of a loss as to what to do. So the reason why I wanted to talk about that dreaded C word and uh, its relationship to pneumonia and blood clots is down to an experience that I had early last year. If you watched my initial video, my intro video back in December, you will have seen that I had an absolutely horrendous 2020. It started off terribly and then it just progressively got even worse. But in late February 2020, when COVID wasn't really a huge deal, where I am in BC, Canada, lockdown 1.0 hadn't happened yet. We were still living the old normal. Nothing had changed. I got very sick. And I hadn't been wiped out like that for quite a long time. It knocked me for six, this cold that I had. Um, it spread really fast through my place of work. We were all coming down with it. And I would describe it as probably one of the worst colds that I've had in living memory. So then lockdown 1.0 started for us here on the 16th of March, so a couple of weeks later. And after working throughout lockdown and finding things like biking to work, lifting heavy objects, and generally doing any kind of exercise pretty difficult, I one day in April started to get a very severe pain in my kind of top right chest and back area. Now those of you that have seen my previous videos will know that I went to the ER because of it and I was told that I just had intercostal myalgia which is pain in the muscles of the ribs. It was like pain and strain and I was just told to go away and stretch and breathe through it. But of course it didn't go away and uh, I didn't go back to the ER at any point because we were mid pandemic and I thought I just had muscle strain. So I kind of stuck it out. It kind of subsided, the pain went up and down, but it was something that I could manage from that point. But then most of you who have also seen my previous videos will know that exactly one month to the day, I ended up not even being able to support my own body weight, having to be carried to the ER by my fiance who then wasn't allowed to come in with me and ended up with a diagnosis of submassive pulmonary embolism and pneumonia. So that was back in May of 2020. There's so much out there now online in regards to people in hospital who have COVID and also have pneumonia. And that term, COVID pneumonia, is reported on daily. COVID pneumonia is completely different to other pneumonia on how it spreads around the lungs. Medical research into the difference between them shows that COVID pneumonia is slow acting and it kind of spreads like a wildfire through the lungs. It uses the lungs own immune cells to spread across the lungs over days or weeks. Other types of pneumonia rapidly infect large area of the lungs. And I actually had pneumonia when I was nine and it seemed like it was a bit more of an instant thing back then. I may have been a bit unwell, but all I remember is I left my year five classroom with what felt like a bit of a stitch. And then I went to the cloakroom and one of my friends made me laugh and it was so painful to laugh. I just ended up falling onto the floor, holding my side until an adult came and helped me. After seeing my GP and then got referred to a hospital for an x-ray, I was diagnosed with pneumonia. 
the lung x-ray that I had back then, I had one white lung and one black lung like this. Um, and it just seemed very quick from the initial pain to it taking over an entire lung and then me being hospitalized and then there for a week. Last year, I didn't get anything that resembled that at all. Um, and the doctors did say at the time that my pneumonia spores were scattered around my lungs. So if I did have a lasting effect from having COVID, it might make sense that the pneumonia was quite slow acting and was spreading around my lungs by taking over cells from the months before when I first started to notice pain. But who knows? So I had a COVID test when I was in hospital in the May, but obviously by that point I was negative because if the cold that I did have back in February was COVID, it was long gone by that point. I also don't think the antibody testing was readily available at that point either. But at my appointment last Thursday, my doctor did send me straight down for some COVID serology testing just to see if there is anything left in me. We all know the likelihood of me getting a positive result for that test is like seriously, seriously low in regards to the antibodies still being there. Um, but the test has been done and when I get the results, I will share them in some form through a YouTube video. Now in regards to blood clots, I'm in a few Facebook groups and I cannot tell you how many people's experiences and stories that I have read on these groups. They've either found their way to these groups because they had a positive COVID test and they suffered through it at some point last year and then months later they think they've got the same infection again but actually they've gone on to develop blood clots in their lungs and they've got a pulmonary embolism diagnosis instead. I took some screenshots of some recent comments on this group um, just so you guys can see how many people are actually reporting this. I had COVID in March, I got extremely sick, developed a saddle PE. I had COVID in December, was then recovering, but developed severe back pain. GP sent me to hospital where they diagnosed a PE in my right lung. Never had anything like this before. Moderate COVID in early January, so thankful to make it through. Two weeks afterwards, this past Tuesday, I was diagnosed with a PE and bilateral COVID pneumonia. COVID, December 15th, positive. Worse, December 23rd, had pneumonia. Went through a course of steroids and antibiotics. Breathing never got better. January 7th, had chest pain, high heart rate, very short of breath and diagnosed with PE. As you can see, there are so many similar symptoms to the COVID uh, symptoms than there are to pulmonary embolism and pneumonia as well. Fever, chills, difficulty breathing, coughing, fatigue, feelings of anxiety and dizziness and so on. I have linked a bunch of other videos and information in the description below because I'm not a medical professional and I cannot give advice or speak about these things in depth, but there is increasingly more information about why people who have had COVID are now developing blood clots and it's not all down to just people being bedridden in hospital for a long time either. It's not just the immobilization factor. There's a doctor on YouTube, Dr. Mike Hansen has his own channel and he was stating in a recent video that the amount, amount of patients him and his colleagues are seeing across the country either suffering or dying from COVID related blood clotting is unprecedented. He also said it's not just him and his colleagues in the US that are having this experience and he brought up a couple of studies which I've managed to find myself. One was a Dutch study that said out of 184 patients in ICU with COVID pneumonia, 20% of them also had clotting issues. There is also another study out of Wuhan where 25% of hospitalized patients had blood clots. But why is COVID causing more blood clots than usual? According to the doctors on YouTube that I've watched and things that I've read online, it is extremely complicated and they still don't have it completely figured out. But going from what I've seen on these doctors YouTube videos and things that I've read online, I'm just going to try and do like an easy to understand version of what they've learned so far. So the virus enters the tiny air sacs in our lungs known as the alveolar cells via an ACE2 receptor, which is a protein that provides the entry point for the virus by allowing it to hook on and infect cells. When this happens, it causes the cell to have less of that ACE2 receptor on its surface, and that causes inflammation, formation of clots, and constriction of blood vessels going to the lungs. If you have just one of those things, it results in low oxygen levels. So if you're suffering all three, then you can just imagine what the patient is going through. The way oxygen gets into our blood from your alveoli is to diffuse from those tiny sacs into our capillaries. 
But in this situation, there's destruction in the capillaries, just like the alveoli with the inflammation and formation of clots, etc. The layer around the capillaries is known as the endothelium. Now that also has ACE2 receptors, just like the alveoli, and so that's a trigger for clotting. There have been some medical studies where they look at autopsies of COVID patients and they have found blood clots in their lungs and just beneath the skin. And there's now studies coming out from those that are from living patients with COVID who also have blood clots just underneath the skin. As you can see, it is a real science lesson trying to wrap your head around what these doctors are trying to figure out on a daily basis, the relationship between COVID and other conditions. But it is really interesting given the amount of people that I see on different online platforms that are dealing with pulmonary embolism diagnosis after having COVID. Just before I end this video, I just want to touch on any of those of you that are watching it out there who have had the vaccine and are now suffering ill effects. In these same groups online, I'm seeing people joining because they've had the vaccine and they're now being diagnosed with blood clots and I do not at all want to start a conspiracy conversation and I am absolutely not saying that the vaccine causes blood clots but I'm just reporting on some people's experiences who seem to have no underlying factors or any previous experiences with clotting but they've received the vaccine and then they've ended up very sick with the same symptoms of those with the virus. One group member posted, had the vaccine, two weeks later a PE, no DVTs, after the vaccine, felt unwell for 72 hours, every part of me hurt. One week on after the PE, feeling like complete crap, totally exhausted and I keep googling about PE and what could have happened. And just a second person put that on the 12th of January they had their first COVID vaccine and then they were told that they had a saddle PE. So I would just be interested to see more people's experiences with this because as I said, we're all just constantly learning right now and no one knows the long-term effects of anything. So the more cases and case studies that are out there, the more reports that are put out there, the more information there is to kind of base some conclusions on. I'm gonna wrap this video up there. I thank you for watching this little snapshot into how COVID is blurring the lines for people with blood clots and pneumonia. I hope it was easy to understand and helped if you're going through anything like what I'm going through. But please do check out the links in the description for more in-depth information around things that I've touched on today. I'm going to release another video very soon about the long hauler symptoms and why my doctors think that I'm now part of that group and basically what my whole nine month review entailed. Let me know in the comments if you've experienced anything like this or know of anyone who may be dealing with it. It's always interesting to find out people's experiences and try and relate to them in some way. Hit the like button if you found it informative and subscribe to the channel for more content coming soon. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.